You might remember this guy from a previous video. It's an Orange Pi PC, and I'm starting to get to know the Orange Pies a little bit. Uh, and they're an interesting, maddening bunch of uh, single board computers. But the PC is pretty good, the Orange Pi PC. Um, the thing that it's missing, I guess, and why we have an Orange Pi PC Plus, uh, which this one might be, let me just check. Yeah, this is the Orange Pi PC Plus. Let's get it out of its bag and we'll see if we can spot the difference. Um, there we go. Yeah, pretty easy to spot the difference there. Big old antenna. Uh, so, but apart from that, if we're looking at H3 here, there's, I think I think there's an H3 under there. The memory configuration looks different. Um, there's an extra chip here. I'm assuming that's got to do with the Wi-Fi. But you can see they've used a lot of the similar layout here. And we've got the same sort of connections on the end. But the, um, yeah, so they're much the same. Um, but finding the operating systems for them is interesting. Ambien seem to do pretty well. And uh, I guess I'd had in mind for a while that I wanted to put a pie hole into the system for home. And a pie hole is a way of trapping ads before they get to the, um, before they get to your device. So as I understand it, and I may not, but let's say that you've got your device, let's say it's a tablet, and it's looking for something, let's say it wants to go out and find a website, then it goes to the Wi-Fi uh, router, but the DNS server is provided by uh, a Pi hole, which is a Raspberry Pi running a particular piece of software that then negotiates with the router and then off to the internet. So this is your router. This is the uh, the www. And then when it comes back all the way through here, the ads are stripped off like magic. So now there's a speaking of magic. I mean, all of this sort of stuff for me is a little bit of um, unicorn pixie fairy stuff. I do a lot of reading. I'm still not convinced. I really understand what's going on. But one thing which I wanted to do was to use this guy. Uh, and the reason why we've um, we've got this is because we were just doing some heat. Well, I was doing some heat experiments. So you've got a couple of chunky um, heat sinks on there, and you've got a fan over the top. And a fan is connected up via this uh, NPN to provide cooling as required, so it doesn't run the whole time. And you set the temperature. So all that, all those details are um, are on a previous video. So I'll just link that up there if I haven't done so already. Uh, so instead of using a Raspberry Pi, I was going to try and use an Orange Pi, and there were a lot of problems. I'm going to write a list of them, and then I'm going to talk briefly about the sorts of things that I found when I was turning this into a Pi hole. All right, so I, I probably missed a few things uh, that I did, and that, that's what worries me. It's one of the reasons why I started the, this channel originally was to keep a track of, particularly via the blog, of all the scripts that I used, all the links, etc. But I'll see if, how I go about the things that uh, caused me four or five hours of pain yesterday. Um, gee, I love the weekends. Uh, firstly was the startup script code. So back when I did this the first time, uh, you could just drop uh, a script into the etc init d location as sudo and it would run at startup but now there seems to be some requirement that it has some extra code for starting stopping restarting all sorts of other stuff and also something to do with the rc.local file and the question mark is i'm not sure if i've got all this worked out just yet one of the things which i did find reasonably alarmingly was that the script to start the fan would start when it overheated, but then wouldn't stop when um, the temperature went down. So I could monitor the temperature of the chip in different ways, but it wouldn't stop. And then I'd look for whether or not this was going, you know, via um, PSAUX and then grep fan, 
and uh, and there's nothing there. It's like, what? It's disappeared. How is that possible? So some of this new stuff here, I think, is interfering with the fact that this thing needs to be running in the background all the time. And in fact, what I did in the end was, because I was running it from a vanilla ambient as I went back to the, um, the image that I'd used it, uh, for this. I'd actually saved the image and, and crunched it down on my computer. So I um, put it onto the SD card and started from the one that I knew already worked. But I'm still curious, uh, how do I go from a vanilla one to get the fan temp script, which is actually pretty useful, running on a whole range of orange pie um, you know, variations in the end. That's what I'm looking for. Um, one of the ones which I did want to use was the Orange Pi Zero Two, which I did take delivery of probably about know, maybe six months ago, and it's it's probably ideal for this job. Actually, it looks like the one in all the range that would work really well. Low power requirements. Uh, it does have a um, an internet, uh, sorry, an Ethernet connection, but it's running this H six one six, and all the Ambien, um, what, what would you call images? Uh, for the orange pies, they are things like H5 or H3 or H2. They do not have an H616. And you start going on the forums, it's like, oh, yeah, we haven't made that one yet. So look out for uh, end of 2021, start of 2022 for that. Would you like to contribute? Uh, so that means that I can't use this device. So this was always going to be a test bed. I didn't intend it to be the actual uh, orange pie pie hole. And I'm still curious to get this one up. One of the things that I've been thinking is modifying a Debian. Uh, so you can get the, for instance, the Debian um, source code for ARM and then perhaps compile it yourself for this machine. But uh, for the, sorry, for the, um, the H616. But then I'm thinking surely people would have already tried that. So I've got to do some more reading on the GitHub site to see what's going on with that. Um, and the other thing is a project which I used oh, at least probably 20 years ago called Linux from Scratch. Um, and that's pretty interesting as well, whether or not you could actually bypass uh, Debian and go straight back to the original Linux source um, and compile it from scratch. Mm, uh, that requires a lot of resources. And you know, maybe people have done that. I get sort of a few whiffs of that going on the internet, but I've not got anything specifically for this device yet. So watch this space for that. Probably the one thing that defeated me for a good hour and a half was my router. So my router arrived from my ISP and I really need to upgrade. It's been chugging along for about five years now. It's awful. When you log in there, firstly, you have to come up with a user a password, login and password, which is fine. But then you say, okay, I want to do some more stuff. So it says, so, so the interface says, yeah, yeah, you can do that, but you need to be an admin. So you have to create another password under that but what's interesting is that there's another layer underneath that which is sort of like oh yeah the actual admin and the reason why you need that is because you need your router to use this as your dns server and only that so that's you know that's what this particular router calls proper admin now i kid you not to find out to how to go from here to here you firstly need to have created your admin account and logged in then you need to right click and save the source code and look for this weird long collection of letters and numbers and then use a program to convert from base 64 uh, to des or ASCII, I'm, I'm assuming, and then you can enter that. And not only that, every time that you uh, then change something or change your page within that proper admin setting, uh, two things happen. Firstly, you need to put in your password again. And secondly, a little pop-up warning comes and says, you really shouldn't be doing this. So, yeah, I think new router time for sure. And that soaked up a lot of time. And it was really quite a rabbit hole uh, on the far reaches of the internet to find out how to um, how to fix that one. Another thing was, and I, I don't remember that. I'll have to go back and check the blog. Um, but I don't remember this problem when I did it originally. But to access the GPIOs here in order to run the fan, uh, you needed a particular version of um, Pi wiring. So Pi wiring is for Raspberry Pi. It's now no longer a maintained uh, project. So the author of that has said, you know, I'm out. 
that in fact it seems to be that the modern Pi uses um, Python scripts and all that sort of stuff to access the GPIOs. But I actually pref I wanted it in a Bash script, you know, with with a, a fairly straightforward executable. So I went back to Pi wiring, didn't work. Tried compiling it uh, from source code, didn't work. Eventually discovered that there is an Orange Pi version of GPIO, and so I downloaded that and then I built it and then I uh, installed it and used that. And that probably took a good another, you know, maybe hour or so to do that as well. Uh, and finally, uh, whether to use this with a Wi-Fi edition. So I had um, one of those little dongles that you stick out the side there and I was doing it through Wi-Fi or whether it needs to be actual cable directly to the router and can it be powered from the router. Um, that's something to find out, so that's yet to be determined. Um, I mean, one of the reasons why I wanted to use this little uh, zero was that um, it does sort of promote itself as low power, and uh, and I'm not sure that this is the same thing. So whether it be able to run from uh, a USB output from the router, I'm not sure. Um, it may need a separate power supply, and whether it should be cabled or via Wi-Fi, I'm not sure either. I suspect cabling, and I suspect it'll need a, a separate power supply. Anyway, so um, what I'll do is uh, we'll just have a quick look at the interface for Pi Hole. I think probably the overall thing to say is that if you want to get into this sort of thing to stop the ads at your place, um, you might want to do the easy thing and get yourself a Raspberry Pi. I understand that even something like a Raspberry Pi 2 works fine, a Raspberry Pi 3 certainly works, and a Raspberry Pi 4 is probably overkill. There's a little bit of a problem at the moment getting supply of those. Um, I was only able to find one supplier in Australia that's only able to do the, I think it's the four gigabyte version of the Raspberry Pi 4, but it would be overkill for, I'm pretty sure, for this project. The Orange Pies will work, and I'll show you that. And um, yeah, let's go and have a look. So that's the old router, which yeah, maybe I'm uh, looking to replace, but here is the Orange Pi PC operating as a Pi hole quite happily. Uh, connected directly uh, with an Ethernet cable to the router and also powered from the USB output of the router as well. So happy days. Let's have a look at it in action. So this is the dashboard for Pi hole. It's running on the Orange Pi PC, you can see up here. And it's only been running for maybe an hour or two. And I've just updated, put on a heap more of the blacklists. I found them on this site here, the Firebog. And uh, it's got lists of lists and you can just choose what you want to block or indeed uh, whitelist. So yeah, that's pretty useful. Um, but yeah, over a couple of hours, it's blocked about 1,500. Um, it's had 1,500 queries, and it's blocked 375 of them. And I've currently got around 350,000 uh, domains that are on that list. And I presume that's the sort of thing that you could you know, manually or even perhaps automatically update from time to time. Um, just to see it working in action, I'll go to a pretty notorious uh, news site, and we should be able to see it receive the request and then block so let's hit that yeah so you can see the numbers there changing as it uh, it goes through those ads and the experience on this is on the ipad uh that i'm looking at this and the experience is um is a lot better i can see what's going on as opposed to just being uh lots of ads so uh, i'm going to keep an eye on that over the next week or so but i think that's a bit of a win that's the circuit working for this week see you next time